morning, everybody. Um, this is an exciting day for us because we get to share the information that we've been carefully putting together and checking and double checking and triple checking to make sure that we can believe what we see. And I'm here to say we believe what we see because it all makes sense. Um, first of all, I want to definitely thank uh, Mayor Fenty and Council Member Catania. Uh, political leadership in this fight is critical. And when I speak with my peers in other jurisdictions, um, I have to tell you, across this nation, political leadership on HIV AIDS is sorely lacking. And that's something I don't have to worry about here in the district. And it's really been critical to transforming our response and putting HIV AIDS on the agenda is the number one public health priority for this city. So thank you, and thank you. Doesn't happen on autopilot. Um, second, I definitely want to thank our partners in producing this report, both for HIV and hepatitis, which is George Washington University, School of Public Health and Health Sciences. As well as my fantastic, phenomenal Strategic Information Bureau, which has tons of people who help and get paper cuts and get, you know, carpal tunnel syndrome, trying to make sure we get all of the data captured and in. This is really a testimony to the capacity we've built within the district government over the past three years to make this possible and make it sustained. That's right. Thank you, James. And I'll probably just hit the same highlights everybody else did because we think they're sort of exciting. Um, you've heard pretty much repeatedly us, from us over, over the last several years that while we have a whole portfolio of prevention and care interventions, one of the linchpins that we have been very much focusing on is HIV testing. Uh, routine, regular HIV testing so that people who are positive can find out about it, can find out about it early, can be linked to care and treatment, can keep from getting sick, can maintain a healthy, lifelong, uh, you know, lifestyle, and take care of themselves and their family. And so, as we're scaling up that program, along with other programs, when we see these numbers, these numbers of our counts for the city as a whole, decrease in the number of people getting AIDS, decrease in the number of people dying with AIDS, decrease in the number of people testing so late in the stage of their disease that they just about have AIDS at the same time they're diagnosed with HIV. Decrease in the number of people who are going from an HIV diagnosis and progressing to, to AIDS within a year. And then we see the positive impacts that explain that. Increase in the rapidity and success with which people are going from an HIV diagnosis to a care setting. Increase in the CD4 count, or an improvement of an earlier stage of disease at the time people are first diagnosed with HIV. Those are not easy gains, and they're a testimony to our fabulous providers out on the front line here who are all contributing to help us move the bar, move the bar to health and success for HIV. So thank you to our partner here who's hosting us, as well as the rest of our partners in this fight. Overall, this update is a case in point that the better we do, the more we must do as well. Because what we're finding with better services, better coverage, better strategies, better use of data to focus those interventions, is we're finding people who were never served previously for HIV prevention, for HIV care, for HIV tra treatment. And as we pull that cover off, as we find and connect with people, we find there's more to do. There are more services that people need to stay healthy for their lifetime. There's a direct connection between the initiatives undertaken in DC to address these diseases and the data that we report here. The more people we test for HIV, STDs, and hepatitis, the more of those diseases we'll find, as the mayor mentioned, and thus we will get more people into the care and treatment that can keep them healthy, and also reduce the number of people who get sick and who unknowingly transmit these diseases to others. The accomplishments cited here have elevated DC into a new level of attack on these epidemics. But it's not enough, because mobilizing residents to learn their HIV status, diagnosing more active STDs, contacting more people exposed to TB, and even more vaccinations for hepatitis, 
result in more people requiring these services so that we can again not just make a dent but fundamentally shift the portfolio and the picture of these diseases in the city. So therefore I'm going to end the way I, you know, repeating myself again. The better we do, the more we must do. The next step is truly moving from promotion of availability of these services to promotion of use and benefits from these services. And only then can we ensure that all district residents can live long and healthy lives.